Well, good morning and a, and a happy Sunday. Um, well, yeah, look at that, eh? Winter is here. 14 day forecast really doesn't have any above temperature. So this is what we're gonna be faced with now going forward. I really think we're gonna pay for the long fall that we had in the beautiful summer with a devastating winter. Uh, my friend there, the gentleman farmer, he thinks that he's uh, something about the bees nest being low to the ground or something. So he doesn't think it's gonna be that harsh. So we'll see where we go. Um, if you haven't checked out any of his content yet, uh, check it out, the gentleman farmer on YouTube. He's got some really cool stuff on there. Uh, of course, we have our joint channel together, Smoke and Oak, where it isn't uh, really farm related, but uh, it's a good time too. What do we got today? Well, I'm going to walk over. I'm going to plug in my telehandler. Uh, guy just texted me, wants to get one of these totes of molasses. I've also got a jug of distilled water here. I've been doing a little bit of YouTube research about resurrecting dead batteries. Um, batteries are an issue on farms everywhere. Lots of this machinery has two or four batteries in it, um, all different sizes, and uh, it's getting really expensive to replace them. So if we can restore them, it might be an option. So we don't really have much for a heated shop. You know, we don't have, uh, this was built like 40 years ago. It's just an R-Trib style, but it's insulated and it's heated. Unfortunately, they didn't have the foresight to put a sump in it. Um, so thawing off equipment is not, uh, it's not the best to do it in here, but whatever. I mean, I'm not, not gonna complain about it because this tractor could be sitting outside with minus 20 oil in it, minus 20 everything, and you gotta start it up, leave it run for five hours for it to warm up before you can even plow snow. Uh, whereas this way we can, uh, yeah, it'll just start. So heated shops up in Northern Alberta, pretty much a must. Certainly, uh, if you don't have a heated shop, you definitely need, three walls and a door get yourself out of the elements for doing any repairs and stuff um we got uh hammer mill in here still so dad changed that bearing yesterday on that shaft i took the gearbox out and went through it changed the oil in it checked the gears tightened up the bearings a little bit uh, like the shafts and timken bearings um we got to flip the hammers today in here got to turn them all because they get rounded off uh, the other thing I had was these mills have the option to just run them basically in mixing mode where the hammers aren't spinning. You do that by this spring-loaded um, pin here. When the pin is in, it drives the hammers. When the pin is out, it just uh, just mixes. Save yourself a little bit of horsepower, a little bit of fuel, and of course a little bit of wear on all the bearings and stuff. There was a roll pin that goes in there to hold the spring that wasn't... It's dark in there. Uh, that was broken off, so I got that replaced. Uh, I've got to tighten up these chains. And then this is basically ready to go out of here. So that was always the plan. First big snowfall, first miserable few days. We were going to back this mill in here and get it all serviced up. Then hopefully it runs for the winter. So that's going to be my plan for today because it's still snowing outside and it's about minus 15. It's still not that fun. So we're just going to... Uh, Go ahead and hang out in here today. Corey and the kids are going to go over to the new house, start putting together some furniture, fill in some uh, holes in the uh, in the trim and stuff, some nail holes, and uh, yeah, don't go too hard on a Sunday. But that's the plan for today. Well, I'm I gotta admit I chickened out. I'm hiding out in the tractor, but uh, filling up the neighbor's toad of molasses, and I'm I'm amazed. So it's about minus. 15 it's been minus 15 all day and uh, i'm using that little electric pump there instead of my gas powered one just because i mean they've been sitting outside and i, I don't even know if they'd start so uh my neighbor has two totes um so he uh he just brings his empty takes his full brings his empty takes his full so i don't know i'm not in a rush to fill it but i was very surprised at how quick this is filling uh, I think only 20 minutes and uh, I filled that tote even through those little lines. The one thing about the molasses is kind of, if you think of hydraulic oil, it never really freezes, but it, it, it does get plenty thick when it gets, uh, you know, down to uh, minus, minus 30 and beyond. You really can't pump it. It doesn't flow so easy, but minus 15, minus 20, minus 25, it's, uh, it's actually quite easy to work with. 
that's a little more of a close-up at minus 15 of how that uh, so this is the 28 percent molasses which is a little thicker uh, than the 32 and I'm not even sure what makes it thicker but as you can see it's quite uh, quite easy to work with even at uh, minus 15 and it's been minus 15 here now for uh, quite a few hours it's cold and windy all day yesterday and uh, cold all night cold all day so if you were worried about your molasses freezing and that's one of the reasons why you haven't committed to using it you don't have to worry so much piggies on the wrong side of the fence I don't understand they should be in here they got everything they need just go check this water I guess but uh I guess if there's no water in here, that's probably why they left. No, there's water in there. Excellent. So this is the, uh, we don't keep them in here all summer. This is just where they stay for the winter uh, until they go off to freezer camp. But uh, I just brought them up a, a straw bale to stick in their shelter here. Keep them nice and warm. It is minus 15 right now. So I got to get this gate open for them so they can get in here. Holy moly, that one scared me. Uh, but yeah, um, this thing is amazing, telehandler. So skid steers were a big fad, right? Every, oh, you gotta get a skid steer. If you ever move to the country, you gotta get a skid steer. And uh, I thought that myself, but from right there over to here, I could just put that bale in there. I didn't have to open any gates or anything. So it's quite amazing. They, uh, definitely a game changer on the farm. I wonder if I open this gate, if a pig will come in. Come on in, piggies. Come on in. Come, come, come. Come on. Stupid pig. Okay, well, I'm going to cut this bale open so they can start ripping it apart. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to spread nothing around with pigs. They do that all on their own. Well, good morning. So we're in the shop. Dad's changing the starter out on the telehandler. And I'm in the process of doing something that's either super smart or real dumb but i've seen this on youtube you can uh <coughs> salvage your dead batteries if you hook them up to a welder so i need to put some distilled water in fill them up i got my welder set and started a slow amperage okay well that didn't take long um as soon as dad realized exactly what was happening in the shop he banished me outside he's like no you're not doing that in here so i uh, i got kicked out minus about 18 blowing super cold snowing terrible day but i gotta do what i want to do outside because he doesn't think hooking the welder up to the battery is a good idea anyways <laughs> time will tell if i can save this battery and save us 180 bucks the joke will be on him so what i've got done here you'll see there's two um you know pincher leads or whatever this is the ground coming off the welder and I just grabbed another ground off of our other welder and hooked it up to the positive. So this is actually coming off the positive side of the welder. This is coming off the negative side of the welder. I had topped all these up with distilled water. You do have to use distilled water for batteries. Um, I'm gonna go in there and fire up the welder now and then I'm gonna come out here and see if this is just exploded or if it's bubbling. So I'm safety first. I got my face shield on, dad's inside. We're gonna fire this thing up. Okay, I can hear the welder running, so I don't know. Oh, look at that, it's boiling right out, look at that. All the water's boiling out of it. I don't know if that's good or not. Anyways, we'll leave it, we're gonna leave it boil. I'm, I'm nervous, I don't know if that's a good idea. But anyways, you can see the water's boiling in there. Uh, it's getting lots of power. Now, apparently the theory here is the plates are corroded. So you boil the heck out of it and then, uh, and then go from there. I'll well, see curiosity got the better of the old boy. Now he's part of it. So we're, uh, we're safely inside the shop and, uh, yeah, it, that boy, that battery's boiling like crazy. He just kicked her up another five amps. It's only about 45, 50 amps. 
So what the YouTube video that I watched said, boil it for five, 10 minutes, shut it off, boil it for five, 10 minutes, shut it off, and then uh, put it back together and go get the charger. Uh, so we'll do this, we'll give it about half an hour. I'll go over and get the charger from the shed and we'll put it on and see if we saved ourselves a battery. So it is still boiling. Um, it's weird, some are boiling more than others, right? It's only bubbling out of those two holes. So and maybe that's the reason why you do the uh, boil it, shut it off, boil it, shut it off. But I do find it funny. My old man went from like, nope, <laughs> you're not doing it. Kick me outside. Then once I got it all rigged up and it started boiling, he was just like, all right, I'll be part of that now. So interesting it was a big day of plowing yesterday i mean it's it's miserable so it's a winter wonderland it's beautiful uh the spruce trees look nice with the frost on and everything but uh <sighs> minus 17 with the wind blowing the way it is it's absolutely brutal we got uh hammer mill done the other day and i backed it in here so nice to have some shed so nice this right i mean the door we never close the doors it's not heated or anything but uh keeps the snow off of everything uh, good place to store all the all the feed and stuff. I had the battery charger over here because when I plug the tractors and stuff in, I plug the uh, leave a battery charger on them too. And then uh, it's just hard on stuff, you know. I, I, I'm starting to see that more and more that you know even beyond minus 20, you just you're almost not money ahead to try to operate. It's just too just too hard on everything. The oil's too thick. The, takes life out of the batteries all sorts of nonsense so anyways we also got to go up we got a water that uh, thermostat quit on it one of those water bowls so we got to do do that and Corey said she has no power in her chicken coop so we'll go up there after we get our starter change and the telehandler and then our uh, battery experiment done with all right first start with the new starter Doesn't even start. I got nothing. That's not good. Well, we found the no start issue. We had this white wire uh, not hooked up correctly, so it wasn't even wasn't even touching. So we'll get that tightened back in there. Boom. Good, good, good. Hook this one back up. Now I think it'll start. Oh, new starter attempt number two here. I guess it worked. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go check this out. I gotta see why only two are boiling. I did get my welder almost up to like 290 amps or something. So, but I, I don't understand. Like maybe that's, you know, maybe that's why the battery is totally pooped. Is only two are getting whatever, right? See, it's oh, this one's starting to, I guess. But you can see, like these two are really going at it, and then these ones are just kind of puffing around or whatever. Anyways, hasn't blown up yet. All right, I'm back, safety geared up. Look at this, this is interesting. So I thought I actually blew my welder up because I jacked her right up to like whatever, 195 amps. And look at, now we got three of them bubbling. Before we only had the two, now that middle one's bubbling. This one's starting to like do this. So, I don't know, like maybe if we get all six of them bubbling, that means it works. I don't know. Anyways, it's interesting. Battery hasn't blown up yet, so it can obviously take whatever we're putting to it. Because I can't turn my welder up anymore. But that's an interesting development. 